but imagine you're still married and maybe you're in a sexless marriage. Maybe you're not, you know, but you discover that your wife has, and it, and it has to, it only works one way. Guys can't fake that the kids, the, you know, are not hers because she has to have the child, right? So it only really works one way. That's why when I was, uh, I think it was on Jedediah Bela's show and I mentioned this as well. Oh, no, it wasn't Jedediah. It was um, uh, Leah Halpern. I was on Leah Halpern's show and I, I don't know how we got on this topic, but it was the topic of uh, women who would name their children, their sons in particular, after um ex-boyfriends after the ones that got away after the uh the the alpha widow the guy that was the 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 one she wants to constantly be reminded of so if his name was dave or something like that and your name is like schmo then your your son's now i want to name him dave okay sounds good you know and then fi you find out from her sister or one of her, you know, her cousins or whatever. Hey, wasn't Dave uh, your old boyfriend's name? Like you'll find out, you know, and my guys will try to like, oh, 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 really? You know? And yes, I'm aware of what's his face. Um, Adam Levine, like naming his daughter, I guess, after some chick that he liked or something like, I get it, you know, it could go both ways, but like very rarely, whenever I hear it, it's usually the woman who's like naming the, the son after a former lover, after the, the the guy who left the most alpha impact on her. That is far more common a situation. However, the reason why that's like a, a an existential betrayal is because it requires the guy to believe in a lie and to believe in this, to, you got to maintain the secret for a lifetime. And it's, I, you know, you wonder like, like I, I have had these conversations before where people say, well, you know, infidelity or no, it is a uh, cuckoldry is really not as common as you think it is, right? It's only like 10%. It's only, I've, I've seen it as low. I've seen numbers as low as two to 3%. And I've seen it as high as 30%. It just depends on who's doing the research and who's, the, you know, who's collecting the data and interpreting the data. So if we can say it's as low as, let's say, 3% and as high as 30%, let's just take it in the middle there. So what, 15, 16%, somewhere around there, let's just say. So if that's the, if that's the case, you know, it, it seems like, oh, well, it's very, very rare, you know, cuckoldry. Well, the reason why we call cuckoldry what it is right now, or we say, oh, well, you know, she had a secret love, it's a love child. It's my love child. You've got to, you don't know that it's yours, right? It's really not yours. Uh, that that level of betrayal is exist is an existential fear of men for for men I guess, and because we want to know that the damn kid is ours because if it's not ours it's not going to be ours I married a slut who fucks like a prude right I have I have invested my resources my time my territory my life my catering my life to afford this woman a lifestyle and these children a lifestyle and I believe this whole time that those kids were mine. That's where jealousy comes from. That's why, that's why we have the jealousy instinct in the first place. That's why it's very, very important. That's why it's so powerful in human males. And the jealousy response, the envy, the suspicion is a survival adaptation. It's a psychology or a psyche, part of the male psyche. Now, women get jealous too for other reasons. Now, there's different reasons why, they, why we do. But we get jealous as a result of not wanting to get cucked, guys, anyways, because we don't want to get cucked. We don't want to uh, lose our investment in that woman and in, in that life because we think that the kids is actually ours. And we find out suddenly that it isn't. Yeah, that puts everything and it throws everything into chaos. Maybe you divorce her, maybe you kill her, maybe you kill yourself, maybe whatever. I don't know. The guys it depends on how that guy reacts to it. But that's something that is going to set guys off. I mean, it's one thing to like, it's one thing to have a mate, mate guarding response, and that mate guarding is also intimately connected to that. Mate guarding is basically behavior, right? Whether it's cognitive or not, but it's also tied intimately to jealousy and to envy and to you know wanting to know that the damn kid is ours. That's why we have you know formalized monogamy. And yes, and but you know, so shout out to the guys in Iron Disciples. I saw your uh, I saw your response video. Oh, I got about halfway through it before I had to start. Um, but the, uh, the idea of wanting to have a merit to be married in the first place, that was to reassure guys that that woman is going to be loyal. The fidelity is going to the kid. The damn kid is going to be your kid. If I have to give up 
my access, my uh, if I have to give up unlimited access to unlimited sexuality, I'm okay with that because you're hot and I love to, I love banging you and you as long as you stay in shape and as long as the kid is mine, I'll do I will I will move heaven and earth for you. I've got a, a, a video from uh, from Andrew Tate here in the uh, the Tate files in a little bit here, uh, talking about exactly that. And with Patrick Bed David in, in Madrid, of all places. Um, but uh, it, it, it comes back down to the want. Like, why, why is marriage a raw deal for guys? I talked about this last week. Why is marriage a raw deal? It's an all downside uh, proposition for men. Why is it that men have more maneuverability and more, um, more access and more, more um, opportunities outside of marriage than they do inside of marriage? Well, it used to be that the only way you could have sex was to get married, right? That was like supposed to be the rules. <laughs> or at the very least, if you weren't, when you did get married or when you did become monogamous, then you were supposed to be resp- patriarchal, you know, patriarchy at least implied that you were, had to be responsible for your wife and your kids. You had the authority over them, but you were at least responsible for them. You were supposed to be responsible for them or else you were not a man of integrity and a man of honor, a man of responsibility, yada, yada, yada. Now, back in the day when you had the uh, authority to exercise that responsibility, that was great. But the whole thing hinges on one agreement, one assurance. The damn kids are going to be mine. I will forsake all others. I will... Uh, in sickness and in health for richer and for poor until death do us part. Um, you know, all the, all the old marriage vows, those aren't just like, you know, flowery. Oh, it's so romantic. No, no, those are, that's, those are terms of the arrangement. Those are terms of the agreement. Here's what I'm going to do, you know, for better or worse, for richer, poor sick, sickness and in health, um, you know, to love and obey, <laughs> Um, you know, and to make sure that the damn kids are mine because I'm com- compromising my innate mating strategy and women are compromising theirs as well. And that was the agreement. That was the arrangement. That's why you have those words and you prom- a vow. You promise to do those things. Well, now the, all bets are off. Women don't I make my own damn money. It doesn't even rich or poor. Fuck that. If you're, if you're not richer, if you don't say, if you get poor, then I'm out. And divorce is always on the table for women. It always will be. I've had that, had that debate with, uh, the debate. I had that discussion with Pat Campbell way back in the day. So yeah, does it, you know, does, is, is it, is jealousy? That's why jealousy is so important. That's why envy is, is a thing. That's why, because men want more than they have so they can actually have, have more for their kids, at least when they get into that position. Uh, why is it that men are status seeking? Why is status a big deal? Why is jealousy a big deal? Why is, uh, uh, the, the male burden of performance. Why do men have burden, per, you know, competency? Why is it that men, more competent men, are more at least attractive in the, you know, for long-term security than guys who aren't? Yeah, well, you can provide for kids. Well, if I'm doing all of that and you want me to be a better man, and that's a big buzz, you know, that's hell. That's that's ninety percent of, you know, uh, masculinity brands today is, you know, I will, you need to be the best man you can be, uh, living your best life, uh, uh, becoming the uh, what the the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Great, awesome. I'm going to be the best version of myself. Of course, you know, trad cons want you to do that because it solves women's problems, but. Well, I, I I have to say, I understand why black pill doomers and, and guys who want to check out don't see, you know, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. I understand that, Aaron Clary. I understand that completely because what happens, you know, what's, what's the payoff? What's the, what's, you know, what's the juice? You still want the juice, but you're like, this is what I have to do to get it. I have to be, become somebody else. I got to be what, uh, what this woman or what female, a female gynocentric social order wants me to be in order for me to get to those rewards that I don't really actually need marriage for in the first place. And God knows, you know, is the kid going to be mine? That's another thing. And then finally, I want to point this out as well, because when we talk about cuckoldry, you have to, if we're going to talk about cheating, we also have to understand the importance of cuckoldry and why it is that women cheat and why men cheat. So when men are cheating, it's usually for sexual access. It's usually they have already committed to monogamy with, with a woman. And that is, remember, monogamy is a compromise of the male mating strategy. It's also a compromise for women, I know, but we're talking about guys right now. So it's a compromise of the male mating strategy because ideally, if you're a top four and a half percent guy 
who can get laid, who can, who enjoys the sexual rewards and intimacy and interests of women. Uh, it's in his best interests, at least, you know, for as long as he's on top of his game at his peak sexual market value, it's in his interests not to spin plates, to, to not be exclusive, to not be married. It's in his best interest to do that. And I think most guys who are lesser men, and I mean that in the most scientific, you know, clinical way as I can put it, but guys who are lesser men would rather he not because it takes more women away from them. I mean, on a larger scale. And that also comes back to why is why do women cheat? Well, usually it's an opportunity. For men, it's opportunity, but it's also a reason. And I want to point this out. I got to preface today's show with that as well, because I've had this conversation with uh, Justin Waller and a, a few other select people when I am talking about uh, infidelity. For cheating to happen in the first place, there has to be an implied, at least an implied contract, if not an actual, you know, formalized contract like marriage or something like that. Um, there has to be some kind of like, are you going to, are, are we, are we boyfriend and girlfriend? Are we a Facebook official? Are we, you know, it's not a soft launch. You're actually showing me in your Instagram. You're giving up all of that because you're showing me on there and you're going to lose followers because now all the guys that wanted to get with you realize that you're with me. And now you're going to sort of uh, take a hit to your brand and you love me that much and you're into me that much. Great. I'm into you. Awesome. We're going to be, you know, we have an, we have an arrangement. Okay. Whether that's spoken or unspoken, the, mono, the monogamy as a, as a, as a, as a formality, that that's a thing, but you have an implied contract. So when I say it's wrong for guys to cheat, I'm looking at it from a pragmatic perspective here. You can add morality all you want to it. I'm not saying that there's not a moral aspect to it with, or ethical aspect to it as well. There is, but that, those eth, that ethical aspect exists because you have an implied contract. 